right, Wholesome One, I'm going to hit you up with some stats that I am taking from Athlons. And then some anonymous coaches' comments as well. All right. So the first stat is that uh, Miami last season on defense recorded a tackle for loss on 11.8% of its defensive snaps, which ranked fourth in the ACC. That includes Notre Dame being in the ACC, ninth in the country. So basically getting into the backfield, making disruptive plays, almost 12% of the plays were negative yardage plays for the Miami defense. Now, my question to you is based on the personnel losses and based on who you expect to possibly improve and the incoming freshmen, do you think that they can keep up that kind of pace? Oh, I think that they can, if not even get better, because that was going to be my question to you, Mark, as far as you're losing a first round player in Jalen Phillips. You're also losing a day three guy in Quincy Roche just because he's not the uber athlete. I mean, if Quincy Roche would have come out in the 2010 draft uh, where guys like D Ford, who was not athletic, was more of a power rusher kind of guy, more of a true football player than he is just an uber athlete, then he probably would have been like a day two guy uh, in all likelihood. But anyway, you're losing both of that production. That's 20 plus TFLs from just two participants. Okay, now everyone else is coming back. Nessa Silvera is coming back. Uh, John Ford, Jordan Miller, those guys are coming back. You're going to have the influx and the growth of a guy like Jared Harrison Hunt, who came on late for us as a two-eye technique, three techniques, interior defensive lineman. You have the growth of a guy like Elijah Roberts, former four-star defensive end, moved to the three technique. Uh, you also have guys like Quentin Williams coming in. Uh, who's moving from the defensive end to defensive tackle. So uh, the interior of this defensive line, I think, is what's going to be a huge step forward and a huge jump for Miami. And that's where it's predicate under Coach Manny Diaz, who, co who is now our D.C. and coaching the defense again. His defense is very, very vital to the interior defensive linemen creating pressure and stopping the run, playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage, okay, because what that does is it bounces every – now everyone wants to bounce it back outside, and we should have the speed to be able to rally and get out there. Uh, take you back to 2017 where we were flying around on defense. Well, the interior of the defensive line is what took that step with guys like Kendrick Norton and R.J. McIntosh playing at big-time levels, and it bounced it outside to guys like Chad Thomas, who hadn't really shown much until then, guys like Joe Jackson, guys like John Garvin, who and, and Trent Harris, who hadn't really shown much, they were able to show out because they had <laughs> offenses had to try to go to the outside because the two men up the gut were handling business. Now, talk about who's going to step up for us on the defensive end side of things. You have um, a transfer in DeAndre uh, Johnson from Tennessee. He's going to be battling for the strong side defensive end competition against number 53, Zach McLeod. And, there's experience there in the SEC and the ACC. There's size, both who are six foot three, two fifty plus guys. So it's not like we got small defensive ends that's going to be blown off the ball. Now on the weak side is where a lot of question marks are going to be. Jafari Harvey, yes, he made some plays, but he's been a rotational guy. He's more likely than not going to be asked to start for us this year. A guy like Chance Williams, more likely than not, going to be asked to either contribute on a high level or if he beats Jafari Harvey out, can start for us. These are guys who are still within their first two years of playing college ball uh, at this level. So uh, we, we've got a couple questions going on uh, at that side of the of the defense. So And linebacker, huge question mark. Uh, I think one of the worst positions in the ACC, to me one of the worst positions in college football, was the Miami Hurricanes linebacking core. And – you want to talk about translating to TFLs, linebackers who shoot gaps and blitz a lot and play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Guys like um, Shaq Quarterman and Michael Pinckney, they did a very good job for that as much as we didn't really like them as much because they really sucked in coverage, but they look way better than what we got going on right now, uh, chuckling at, 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 at line, inside linebacker for the Miami Hurricanes. So I'm hoping that the TFLs this year, Mark, to answer your question, comes majority from the defensive front. Because 
if we have to blitz a lot, that means that those four are not getting to the QB and those four are not playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage and making plays. If you think back to when we were playing at very, very high level, latter half of 2016, almost the entire season of 2017, we did not have to blitz. Now, did we send blitz? Heck yeah, of course you, you do that. But in contrast to 2018, we had a big drop off in the production of defensive line and a, drop, a big drop off in the talent of the defensive line. We had to send a whole bunch of blitzes and we were ranked very high in big plays given up because teams would hit the hot route tight end, hit the hot route slant, hit the hot route out the running back out the backfield, and they would gain 30 yards because we had to blitz to affect the passer. Just like I said, 2017, we didn't have to do that much because R.J. McIntosh and, and, and Kendrick Norton and Chad Thomas and Joe Jackson were handling things from just those front four, stopping the run and getting to the quarterback. So I hope that that TFL production takes a step up. But what I don't hope is we have to blitz in order to either meet that same expectation of TFLs or to exceed it. I'm hoping that the defensive line can handle that by themselves. This stack kind of plays into the previous one, but it shows that uh, last season Miami's defense on third down averaged 8.3 yards to go for a first down for the offense. So basically they were succeeding on first and second down to place opposing offenses in third and eight, 8.3 to be exact. That was the best figure in the ACC and number five in the nation making plays on first and second down to make it third and long for the opponent. The funny part about this, Mark, is uh, this is where I've always felt like analytics and sports, they just don't mesh for me because the way that you can illustrate these things makes it seem like our players were way better. Our scheme was way better than what it really was. You know, we're fifth best in the country. What you said? Fifth in AC, number one in ACC and fifth in the country? First and second down. We never once looked like that, like, like ever. So um, maybe against the lesser competition and and some – now um, I do I do dial that back. Some fourth quarters, Mark, this defense, oh, my Lord. <laughs> they just – it's like Manny walked over there. Excuse me, Coach Diaz walked over there, took the headset from <laughs> Coach Blake Baker, and he magically started calling the defense when it mattered. NC State was a shootout until the fourth quarter. Then they just couldn't move the ball anymore. Virginia Tech, we ended up winning by one, but the defense started dominating in the fourth quarter. Virginia, although I'm still angry we only won that game by one point, they didn't move past the 50 after the mid midway of the third quarter. It's like Coach Diaz walked over there, and he's like, no, this, no, no, we're going to go to this check, we're going to go to that check. Our linebackers, I want you to address this. We're not getting enough communication on the second half of our defense. We got to make sure we're talking this out. Boom, 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 boom. And then he walks away, and then Coach Blake Baker's like, ah, uh, okay, whatever he said, ready, break. You know, <laughs> that's what it seemed like uh, happened for us in some parts of last year. So I can see where those statistics can kind of uh, uh, show up, but. I don't know, man. Number one in the country in certain stats. Oh, that's a, that's a tough one. Number um, one in the ACC, number five in the country. Still way up great. there. Yeah, that's that. That's great. That's top of epsilon. I mean, number five out of 130 some odd teams. That, that's not yeah. easy pickings. Uh, but you're also talking about one of the best defensive minds in Coach Manny Diaz. He gets a lot of flack from me in certain situations. He gets flack from our fans in certain situations because, again, I went back and did the compare and contrast in preparing for this show but also preparing for my film uh, breakdown and where I'm going to be talking about the differences in the 2020 defense, the 2020 and 2019 defense compared to 2017 and 2018. And mainly was who was in charge calling the defense. You had Coach Blake Baker. You had Coach Manny Diaz. Now, Coach Blake Baker had more of a gap sound, not necessarily like hold your gap, don't shoot gaps type of thing, 
but he's like, I need you to maintain this A. I'm not saying you have to sit here as a nose guard, but if you're going to shoot it, make sure nothing comes up this guy. So it, it had our players thinking a little more. Even, even if it's for a slight second, they're thinking more. Coach Diaz's way of doing it is my defensive front is going to shoot gaps, slant, attack, and twist. My linebackers are going to make up for any errors. They're going to make them right. That's what we call it on, on a defense side ball. Make them right. So if I know for a fact Jalen Phillips loves to – if the offensive tackle gives him the inside shoulder, he's gonna he's gonna pinch inside. The difference between Coach Blaker and Coach Diaz, Coach Blaker is like, oh, what, what are you doing? You have C gap. Coach Diaz is like, hey, weak side linebacker. You know he likes to do that. I need you to bounce outside. You take the seat. We have to understand each other. We have to have that chemistry to know, hey, he likes to do that. You see it happening in front of you. So instead of you standing in the B gap and now the, the UNC def running back is off for 40 yards, creep to the gap over, make him right, and let's have every gap field to have every gap assigned. So uh, I think it's going to be a big a big step up in, in the production of the defense because Coach Diaz has more of that fluid chemistry style of defense. And I think Coach Blake Baker had more of a this is my system. You need to fit to my system kind of coach towards defense and both can be successful but i think for the miami hurricanes and the way that we recruit and the way that we coach i think that it'll be a lot better under coach Deere.